Canada is the world's second largest country by land area, but it has a relatively small population. With a land area of 9.85 million square kilometers, Canada is almost as large as the entire continent of Europe. However, Canada's population is just 38.8 million, which accounts for only 0.5% of the world's population. This means that Canada has a population density of just four people per square kilometre, which is one of the lowest in the world. There are a number of reasons why Canada has such a small population. One reason is that the country's climate is relatively cold, which makes it difficult for people to live in many parts of the country. Another reason is that Canada's economy is historically based on resource extraction, such as forestry and mining, which does not require a large population. In recent years, Canada has been trying to attract more immigrants to help boost its population. The country has also been investing in its economy to create more jobs and make it a more attractive place to live. Nearly all Canadians live close to the US border. This means that very few Canadians live in the vast northern parts of the country. The population distribution is even more concentrated near the border, with 95% of Canadians living within 160 kilometres or 100 miles of the US-Canada border. If you were to look at a map of Canada with only 75% of the population marked, it would appear that the country is mostly empty. This is because the vast majority of Canadians live in a relatively small area near the US border. The 49th parallel is a line of latitude that runs along the border between Canada and the United States. More than half of all Canadians, over 50%, live below the 49th parallel, which means they live in the southernmost parts of the country. The vast majority of Canada's mainland is very sparsely populated. This means that there are very few people living in these areas. The population density is much higher in the southern parts of the country, near the US border. Canada's vast landmass is divided into 10 provinces and 3 territories. The 3 territories, Yukon, Northwest Territories and Nunavut, make up a significant portion of Canada's land area, accounting for 40% of the total. However, they are home to only 3% of Canada's population. This means that the territories are very sparsely populated, with an average population density of just 0.1 people per square kilometre. The remaining 60% of Canada's population is spread across the 10 provinces. Of these, four provinces, Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia and Alberta, account for over 80% of the Canadian population. These provinces are located in the southern part of the country, where the climate is more temperate and the land is more suitable for agriculture and settlement. So why is most of Canada so sparsely populated and what's the reason behind this unique distribution? The answer lies in history. Canada's population distribution can be traced back to when European settlers first accessed North America through the St. Lawrence River. Initially, Vessels could only travel as far as the Lachine Rapids, leading to the development of Montreal. The Lachine Canal was later established, making Canada part of the most efficient route to North America. This canal provided access to the Great Lakes and connected Canada to the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, turning Canada into a crucial trading hub. Toronto and Montreal were two major cities that developed during this era when port cities were of utmost importance as they facilitated trade and were hotspots for immigrant settlement. When immigrants arrive in a new country, they typically prefer to settle in urban areas, seeking better job opportunities and a higher quality of life. This preference for urban living explains the concentrated population near the US border, especially around major industrial hubs and cities. A significant factor that contributes to the population distribution in Canada is the availability of resources. In Alberta, for instance, the concentration of the population around Edmonton can be attributed to the region's role as the epicentre of Canada's oil production. Alberta's contribution to Canada's oil industry is a key reason why Canada is the world's fourth largest oil producer. Additionally, the fertile land in Alberta is suitable for agriculture, a rarity in Canada further attracting people to settle in the region. Contrary to popular belief, extreme cold temperatures in northern Canada are not the primary reason for the sparse population. Even in extremely cold regions like the Arctic, human habitation has become possible. 
The critical factor affecting the population distribution in Canada is its unique geological feature called the Canadian Shield. The Canadian Shield, spanning nearly 5 million square kilometres, extends from the USA in the south to the Arctic archipelago in the north. This geological formation, shaped like a horseshoe, makes up almost 50% of Canada's landmass. Its rocky terrain and thin topsoil layer make it unsuitable for agriculture. This, combined with the harsh northern climate, makes it challenging to establish settlements and infrastructure in these areas. The Canadian Shield's rocky formations pose a significant obstacle to infrastructure development. Massive rocks jut out hundreds of feet, and the terrain is rough and unpredictable, with sudden changes in elevation making development extremely difficult. Furthermore, Canada's vast forests, covering nearly 10% of the world's forested area, limit large-scale deforestation due to environmental concerns. As you travel south towards the US border, the climate gradually becomes milder and more favourable for both human habitation and agriculture. This favourable climate is largely attributed to the presence of the Great Lakes, which act as massive heat sinks. These interconnected bodies of water absorb and release heat slowly, moderating the temperature swings and creating a more stable climate. The moderating influence of the Great Lakes is particularly evident in the Windsor-Quebec City Corridor, a region stretching along the US-Canada border from Windsor, Ontario to Quebec City, Quebec. This corridor has become a major population center, attracting people from all over the world due to its fertile soil, abundance of fresh water and well-developed transportation networks. The rich soil in the Windsor-Quebec City corridor is ideal for a variety of crops, including corn, soybeans and wheat. The region's proximity to the Great Lakes provides a reliable source of irrigation, further enhancing its agricultural productivity. The Great Lakes also serve as vital transportation routes, connecting the region to major markets both domestically and internationally. The St. Lawrence Seaway, a man-made waterway that links the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes, plays a crucial role in facilitating trade and commerce. The combination of fertile soil, abundant water and convenient trade routes has made the Windsor-Quebec City Corridor an ideal location for human settlement and economic development. The region's favourable climate has only further contributed to its attractiveness, making it a thriving hub of activity for centuries. However, the issue of population density in Canada is far from resolved. Former Prime Minister Mackenzie King aptly noted, if some countries have too much history, we have too much geography. The challenge lies in increasing the population in a way that disperses it more evenly. This would lead to the development of several urban centres, spurring economic growth and potentially alleviating the issue of Canada's vast, empty spaces. Canada's population is concentrated in a few large cities, which means that many other parts of the country are less densely populated. This can make it difficult to provide essential services like housing, healthcare, transportation, education and employment to people who live in those areas. One way to address this challenge is to encourage the growth of urban centres in less densely populated regions. This would require a comprehensive approach that includes investments in infrastructure, education and job creation. By doing this, Canada can help to create a more balanced population distribution across the country, which would lead to a number of benefits, including improved access to services, economic growth and a more vibrant cultural landscape. That's all for today's video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed watching. If you found the content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. As always, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. God bless you all.